You're listening to the American Girl Podcast Network. Hi, I'm Maggie Lawson, the narrator of 10 Minute Mysteries. This season's story is based on one of our favorite American Girl mystery books, The Light in the Cellar, a Molly mystery by Sarah Bucky. Episode 6, A Serious Sugar Shortage. Molly sat beside Mrs. Courier's bed at the Oak Knoll Convalescent Hospital, wondering whether she should mention the black truck she had seen at Greystone Manor. Although she didn't want to worry her, Molly hoped that Mrs. Courier might be able to explain what the truck was doing there. But before Molly could say anything more, Nurse Schroeder came in with a tray of medicine. Mrs. Courier smiled at Molly. Why, a cup of tea would certainly make this medicine go down nicely, she said, looking hopeful. Nurse Schroeder told Molly, You can go down to the kitchen and ask for some tea. And just a sliver of cake to go with it, please, Mrs. Courier called as Molly left the room. She hurried down two flights of stairs to the hospital kitchen. The hallway outside the kitchen smelled like fresh baked cornbread. Mm. Inside the swinging doors, Molly saw Marta, the hospital aide, putting squares of yellow cornbread on plates. Her young daughter was sitting on a stool at the table and placing a spoonful of red jam on each plate. The little girl looked up and smiled shyly at Molly. (laughs) Mrs. Courier would like a cup of tea, please, said Molly. Without a word, Marta made up a tea tray and handed it to Molly, saying, Don't spill it. Molly thanked her and was halfway up the first staircase when she remembered the cake. She turned around and headed back downstairs. Just outside the swinging doors, she could hear voices in the kitchen. You and your kid shouldn't even be here. And if you cause any trouble, I will tell the cops about you. Shocked, Molly stopped. A woman spoke in a low tone. It sounded like Marta, but Molly couldn't hear what she was saying. Why is someone threatening to tell the police about Marta? What's she done, Molly wondered. Clearly, this was not the time to ask for a piece of cake. Molly turned and was heading back to the staircase when a man flung open the kitchen doors. He strode past her, then stopped and turned around. Molly read the name Mr. Lawrence embroidered on the pocket of his blue uniform. Young lady, did you hear what happened in there? He asked, and Molly nodded. Well, I'm sorry you had to hear that, and I'm sorry I got angry, he said. But we're in the middle of a war, and we have got to be careful. Some people can't always be trusted, you know. Be on the lookout for anything suspicious, you understand? Molly nodded, and Mr. Lawrence hurried on. As she carried the tea tray to Mrs. Courier's room, Molly's stomach tightened. Could Marta be a criminal or a spy? Molly's hands trembled as she poured tea for Mrs. Courier. She said, I'm sorry, but I couldn't get any cake. That's all right, dear, said Mrs. Courier. I didn't really expect it. We never seem to get cake anymore. One of the nurses said something about the kitchen running short of sugar. I suppose it's this awful war. Maybe, thought Molly, or maybe there's a thief at the hospital. That night at dinner, Molly's mother reported that the sugar missing from the Red Cross storage room still had not been found. She said, there's enough sugar for coffee and cocoa for Saturday's canteen, but not nearly enough to make all the cookies that our soldiers will want. Maybe the soldiers could fill up on sandwiches and you could skip the cookies, suggested Molly's brother Ricky with his mouth full. No, we can't do that, said Jill, Molly's teenage sister, who volunteered at the Red Cross. Everyone turned to her, surprised by her outburst. Jill went on, her face flushed with emotion. I've heard soldiers at the hospital talking about our cookies. One said his train stopped at the canteen a year ago, just as he was about to ship out to the war. He still remembers the fresh baked cookies. He said it was like having a taste of home. Molly's mother nodded. The cookies make a real difference for our boys going overseas to fight. And they're an important tradition for the canteen. So we are going to make sure we have as many cookies as possible. I've asked all of our neighbors if they can each bake a few batches. And I plan to use up our family's sugar ration for the month. I hope you kids don't mind. The soldiers need it more than we do, Molly said stoutly. Thank you, dear. Your father would be proud of you, said Mrs. McIntyre with a smile. That evening, as Molly and Emily walked their puppies after dinner, Molly told Emily what she had heard at the hospital about Marta. She added, Marta works in the kitchen, so it would be easy for her to steal sugar from the hospital. And anyone can walk into the Red Cross, so she could be stealing from there too. 
Auntie Prim says Marta is quite nice," said Emily, looking doubtful. "Does your aunt know her?" asked Molly. "Well, Auntie Prim likes to chat with everyone, so she tells me all about the people at the hospital. She says that Marta works hard to take care of her daughter, Ruth." Molly remembered little Ruth smiling up at her from the kitchen table. She said, "I don't want to get Marta in trouble, but Mr. Lawrence says we should keep an eye on her, and if she's stealing, we have to think of a way to stop her." Could you find out more about Marta from your aunt? I'll try," said Emily. "Auntie Prim asked me to visit her tomorrow and stay longer, since I won't be delivering magazines. I'll ask her about Marta." "Good," said Molly. "The sooner we find the thief, the sooner we can return the sugar." "What about you, Molly? Don't you have to return the key to Greystone Manor tomorrow? Can you do it if I'm not with you?" Molly's insides tightened. She definitely did not want to go by herself. Then she had an idea. I'll get Susan and Linda to come with me. Friday after school, Molly, Linda, and Susan bicycled up Overlook Hill together. When they reached the top, Susan said, "We'll wait for you up here, but I have to go to the house to lock the door and put the key back in the garage. Can't you come with me?" "Are you going into the house?" Linda asked. "No, but well, I was hoping we could look into the cellar through the windows." Maybe we could find out where that light we saw was coming from. Molly told them. Susan shook her head, looking horrified. Molly, what if a ghost made that light? I don't want to go anywhere near a ghost. You can look around if you want to, but we're staying up here. Linda said firmly. Susan took the lanyard and whistle from around her neck and handed them to Molly. If you get into trouble, blow on this whistle. We'll hear you, and we'll go get help. Molly headed down the driveway alone, her heart pounding. She locked the front door of the house and then went to the garage. She opened the door and peered inside, but there was no sign of a black truck, just the dusty old Packard. The dim garage looked the same as it did when Molly was there before, but the odor of gasoline was stronger than before. It sure smells like someone is using the garage, Molly thought as she hung up the key. She pulled the garage door shut behind her and looked up to the top of the driveway where Linda and Susan had been waiting. But no one was there. Linda, Susan, where are you? We're right here," said Susan as she and Linda walked around the side of the garage. Relief flooded Molly as Linda added, "We figured if there really was a ghost, it probably would have already gotten you by now. Besides, we want to see what's in the cellar too." Then let's go," said Molly with a grin. And the girls hurried to the side of the house and stopped at one of the cellar windows. Molly crouched down and tried to look through the glass, but it was so dirty she couldn't see anything. She used her handkerchief to wipe away the grime and then peered in again, but all she could see were some pipes in a dark room. It just looks like a normal basement, Molly reported. Linda ventured around to the back of the house. "I found the door to the cellar. It's back here," she called. Molly and Susan joined her beside an old, heavy wooden door set in the ground at a slant. It was locked with a shiny metal chain and padlock. Well, I guess we couldn't get in there even if we wanted to," said Susan. The girls circled around to the front of the house, stopping at a low window facing the driveway. "This is the window where we saw the light, isn't it?" Molly asked, and the other girls nodded. Kneeling on the grass, Molly wiped a clean spot on the window and peered in. Suddenly, she gasped and asked, "What are those? Let us look. M- move over. I want to see," said Linda and Susan as Molly inched over to make room. "They look like big sacks of flour." Or sugar," said Susan. But Linda shook her head. "Who would have enough ration stamps to buy that much sugar? Even if you'd been hoarding it for years, you wouldn't have that much." Molly stood up and looked around uneasily. Slowly, she said, "You're right. To get that much sugar, you'd have to steal it." What are all those missing sugar bags doing in the basement at Greystone Manor? Listen to next week's episode as Molly discovers a new potential suspect in the case. Thank you so much for listening to Ten Minute Mysteries. And parents, don't forget to write us a review wherever you are listening. It really helps us out. Parents can watch Ten Minute Mysteries with their family on YouTube, or your child can watch on YouTube Kids. 